You are all probably saying, holy fucking shit, where the fuck is the disk drive? We don't know. What the fuck is up, you buttercups? It's your boy, Penny Skinness. And today, I'm making a video pretty much exclusively because Hunter the Goblin showed me one of the worst reaction videos I've ever seen. Now, the subject of today's video revolves around the release of the PS5 Pro specs. That's right, we got some more console war bullshit going on. So a few days ago, PlayStation put out a technical presentation announcing the PS5 Pro. The internet immediately blew up, with the main criticism being the $700 price point. Some people were putting together builds to try to compete with the PS5 Pro, while PlayStation fanboys were declaring victory over Xbox. Before we get to the main course of today's video, let's look at what the PS5 Pro offers. Lead system architect Mark Cerny explains fidelity mode versus performance mode. Fidelity mode is about quality, but is capped at 30 FPS, while performance mode usually is capped at 60 FPS and is of lower quality with dynamic resolution that drops to maintain 60 FPS. He doesn't go too much into dynamic resolution, but think of it like when you're watching Hulu and your Wi-Fi takes a shit so the quality drops for a second. It does that while you're playing the game to try to maintain 60 FPS. Again, PC gamers, I know this isn't something you deal with often, bear with me. These are the limitations of the current PlayStation 5 that he's listing. Let's see how the PS5 Pro fixes this. PS5 Pro substantially improves over PlayStation 5 in three ways. Here's what we call the big three. There it is. That is all they've added. Larger GPU, advanced ray tracing, AI driven upscaling. Of all of these, what is actually useful here? Larger GPU. According to Sony, the GPU has 67 more compute units, 28% faster RAM, and a 45% performance increase in the speed of rendering. Not sure exactly what that means. Ray tracing is garbage. It's basically just a method of generating light and shading that's more realistic, but takes a shit ton of processing power and is absolutely useless in the long run. Anyone who cares about ray tracing is stupid. AI driven upscaling. What is that? A sorry excuse of a way to get higher FPS by dropping the resolution and using AI to fill in the gaps. Technically not completely useless, especially for console gaming, but it's cheese, especially if you're trying to charge $700 for a console and you're not even going to actually be able to play games at native resolution. You're going to have to upscale it. Another thing we have to mention is that for $700, this thing doesn't come with the vertical stand, nor does it come with the disc reader. If you want both of those, that'll be another $110, which brings the price to $810 before taxes. $800 is a lot of money. You're getting pretty close to computer prices there. In fact, you can find pretty good computers on sale for $800 or less. YouTuber Some Ordinary Gamer made what I thought was a pretty solid video explaining what kind of PC equivalent you could maybe compare the PS5 to, as well as the issues he has with it, like the fact it doesn't come with a disc reader, the lack of any major CPU upgrades. Overall, I thought his video made a pretty good case why maybe you want to go for a PC, while also defending console's ability to maintain ownership of physical copies of your games. Now I was minding my business, probably watching TV, playing video games, enjoying my Sunday evening, when my buddy Hunter approaches me, Jojo, I have some whoopee doopee bullshit I need you to take a look at. So he sends over the link, we pop that bitch open in Discord call. It is a clipped stream reaction from GG Clips. GG Clips being a clip channel from a YouTuber named Griffin Gaming. I swear I've heard of Griffin Gaming before, looking at his channel. You practically call him a gaming centric leafy clone. So he posts this reaction on his clips channel and it was so dog shit that me and my boys were just like, all right, let's incept his reaction. Apparently the PS5 is a scam, guys. It's an absolute scam. If you buy it, you're going to get a box of bricks. You heard it here first, apparently. Yeah, it was me, Mujar, and uh, yeah, normally I don't make a follow video like- He's got the cheap polo shirts with the big logo. We're coming out of the gate strong with a solid straw man, followed up by making fun of his polo. 11 out of 10 so far. But uh, yeah, the PlayStation scam is a lot worse than I actually thought of. Now to give a quick idea about it, ladies and gentlemen, the PS5 Pro got announced yesterday, and I made a video where I said it is not worth the uh, 700 US dollars that Sony is asking for it. Now, if you think that was a joke, the $700, no, 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 this is an actual official Sony press release, okay? They basically showed this PlayStation 5, and uh, they brought up the fact that, yes, it's seven- I'm not watching video game, donkey. No. 100 US? I cannot fucking stand listening to that guy. 700 Great British Pounds, and for some reason, 800 Euros, okay? Now, meaning that- Anyone that purposely makes themselves sound retarded in a YouTube video, I'm not gonna watch. It's fucking infuriating. All right, we're getting off topic a little bit here, but I just thought it was funny how this guy is like, I'm not gonna listen to anyone who sounds retarded in a YouTube video, and then sounds like the love child between Vegan Gains and Leafy is here. You're wrong, and I'm always right. What's up, guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. What's up, my fellow gamers? I hope you guys are all having a great day today. I digress. Let's get back on track. If you're in Canada, like me, for instance, in my land, 
Before taxes, okay, this is $950-$60. After taxes, just the console alone is costing you $1,000. Now, to give one quick idea over here, this is getting to a point where it's so expensive that you might as well consider joining the world of PC gaming, okay? When I was younger, okay, I used to justify consoles because overall, it really was a cheaper barrier of entry than just playing the video games you wanted to play. God, with what the fuck is he talking about? I used to justify consoles. Doesn't this motherfucker have like a massive physical game boner and literally constantly talks about how he plays on console? Because he cares about physical media and shit like that. <laughs> and just like that, we pivoted. Mudahar is saying right here, console prices back in the day were quite affordable compared to nowadays. This has nothing to do with physical media, another thing that he advocates for. But instead of addressing that issue of the prices getting quite high, firmly in the PC range now, Griffin just ignores it completely. Now PlayStation 5 is one of those systems where it's pretty much one of the most boring upgrades, literally almost like an iterative upgrade over the PlayStation 4. So, like I said last- in, in Yeah, what did you expect? Like, them to fucking literally create a brand new way to play video games like this is like a supposed tech like tech guy are you like genuinely surprised that this generation of consoles isn't a huge upgrade like anyone with a basic understanding of fucking technology could have told you that i don't know again he's ignoring the fact that the problem here is the price the ps4 launched for 400 dollars. if you're looking to buy this iterative upgrade the base ps5 with a disc reader was 500 dollars. that being the version you'd need to play all your ps4 games even if you trade in your ps4 for 150 dollars it's still 350 more dollars you've paid on top of the 400 you already paid for the ps4 we are now at best at 750 dollars at worst if your console is too busted up to trade in now you've spent 900 dollars the question then becomes does the iterative upgrade warrant that much of a buy-in especially if instead of 500 it's now 700 to 810 dollars but i decided to go to pc park picker and just quickly put together a system that was roughly equivalent to what i expected out of the playstation system pc equivalent specs is one of the main contentions in this entire debate right now now. The truth of the matter is, any desktop mid-range CPU with 8 cores is going to be better than anything inside any console to date, including the PS5 Pro. To match the PS5 Pro's capabilities, you'd have to take that 3700X that he put into the build and lock the boost clock down to 3.85, which is the confirmed CPU frequency in the PS5 Pro, which by the way, is the same exact CPU as in the PS5. All they've done is up the clock slightly, which if I had to guess, means they found some heating solution that's better than what's in the PS5. Overall, it's not much of a bump. GPU-wise, has yet to be seen, because theoretically, this could be bleeding-edge AMD technology, or it can just be second-hand AMD technology, like has been the case for years now. For the longest time, AMD has lagged behind NVIDIA, and the most likely reason people are comparing it to NVIDIA cards instead of AMD cards probably has to do with the ray tracing. AMD is not known for their ray tracing capabilities. NVIDIA basically invented it. Now one thing that was interesting, and the reason why I wanted to revisit this video this quickly, is because according to Sony's release, nothing in this upgrade list talks about a CPU. So one of the things that I mentioned last time was, you know, a game like Grand Theft Auto 6, which is most likely dropping next year, hopefully, you know, maybe there's a 60 FPS version on the PS5 Pro. There's probably not going to be a 60 FPS version. With open world games, the most important aspect of them is the constant, uh, you know, uh, real time tick that happens with the CPU. To render thousands of NPCs, or at least the amount of NPCs that were in the GTA 5 trailer, to render those things and the logic in the world and the, and the vehicles and just the logic of Vice City running per second on your device requires a lot of CPU power. PlayStation 5 was already something that, well, yes, it was a big upgrade over the PlayStation 4 generation. I don't think it's going to run GTA 5 or sorry, GTA 6 at 60 frames per second. I just don't really think it's that possible. Now, of course, if you're not upgrading the CPU, there's a pretty good chance that the game is just going to be running at 30 frames, even on the PS5 Pro, except the only difference is the ray tracing might be better and the game will run at a higher resolution, okay? How much will you notice that as you play the game with the cops chasing you as you're doing story missions, playing online? I think that well, really- Well, if you don't notice it, then don't buy the Pro. Like, it's that simple, dog. If you don't think it's a big enough upgrade, you don't have to buy it. It doesn't make it a scam. It is what it is. It's more powerful hardware. The point Mudahar is making here is that the CPU in the system is exactly the same as in the PS5. According to Digital Foundry, they have upped the clock slightly. Very slightly. Is that slight increase to the clock worth buying for when a game like GTA 6 comes out, which is going to be very CPU intensive? The point Mudahar is trying to argue is that this probably isn't worth buying. It doesn't matter if he buys it or not. He's rich. He could, he could buy whatever the fuck he wants. That's not the point being made here. He's trying to explain to other people, a lot of who probably have way less financial freedom than him, why he's not sure if this is worth the purchase. See, Griffin hyper fixates on the word scam here, as if Mudahar is claiming they're lying about the specs that are going to be in the PS5 Pro. There is no evidence they're lying about the specs. Mudahar never claims they're lying about the specs. This is another straw man to try to avoid the price point issue. So to go back to PC Park Picker, because they never upgraded the CPU, I decided to throw in a Ryzen 7 3700X, which I believe is pretty much the equivalent of what you 
expect with a base PlayStation 5 anyways, and what you'd expect with a PlayStation 5 professional. I've already gone over why the CPU is better than what's in the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 5 Pro, and in the Xbox for that matter. It's just the closest comparable, 8 core, 16 thread, but you'd have to downclock it to be as bad or mediocre, I guess, as the PS5 Pro CPU. I decided to put in the CPU cooler, which again, it wasn't really that crazy extremely expensive. The motherboard, I gave it 32 gigabytes of memory versus 16 gigabytes because I figured with PC gaming, with PC stuff, you probably want to be at least a bit higher than consoles, okay? Just in terms of memory. I decided for storage, I wanted to match what the PlayStation 5 was bringing. I gave it two terabytes for $117. Uh, when it came to the video card, I decided the best yeah, approximation was- but that's not the same quality of SSD, but whatever. I mean, you know, if you want an actual PS5 compatible, like two terabyte SSD to the same spec, it's closer to like 160 ish dollars this is where his dumbass really starts to show griffin gaming knows nothing about pcs he is 100 percent talking out his ass here first off that is a ps5 compatible m.2 ssd m.2s look like this they have the the little the little gold pins on the end instead of a sata connector they are extremely fast in comparison to a hard drive or an ssd second those speeds become negligible after you get into the thousands of megabytes the slowest m.2 is still faster than any SSD and you will not notice the difference nor will your PlayStation or any games on it notice the difference. The reason why is because these fast read and write speeds aren't actually for gaming. It's not even for normal file access. Once you get past a certain point, the only real benefit you'll see is when it comes to reading and writing 4K footage because no game can even utilize three and a half gigabytes a second of data transfer. And third, this SSD is $160. You were literally just talking straight out of your ass. If you want a PC, you're a fucking idiot if you only spend 700 bucks on it. And if you want a console, you don't want a PC. Like, it's that simple. People who are buying a console don't want a PC. And people who are buying a PC, why the fuck are you trying to match console performance? It literally makes no sense. The price comparison argument has been the dumbest fucking shit I've ever heard since I've been on fucking YouTube, personally. The reason people are comparing prices is because if the entry price for good PC gaming is approaching the maximum of what a PS5 Pro can output, why not just save yourself the money by getting a PC? Any of these $700 to $900 builds support the AI upscaling technology that the PlayStation 5 Pro is just now getting. That is why talking price is important here. Why would you buy a $700 console, $810 with the stand and the disc reader, when you could just get a PC? I've not even brought up the amount of money you're saving on the PlayStation Plus subscription. That's anywhere from $80 to $216 per year, depending on the tier you buy and if you're paying monthly or annually. Pulling up the first random pre-built on Amazon on $850, you will get wildly more performance out of this than a PlayStation 5. Oh, there's only one terabyte of storage? You can add more later. You don't have to take out the one terabyte, you can just put more in. That 4060 is going to knock that mobile GPU out of the park. 16 gigs of RAM, just put two more sticks in later. Not to mention that processor is leagues better than anything you're going to find in a console. But the argument is that $700 for what you're getting for the PS5 Pro is not worth it. They're not upgrading enough. You still have the same CPU. You have a slightly better GPU. When the current gen generation of consoles dropped, no one was able to argue you could get the same gaming experience for as cheap as you could get a console on a PC. And that is because you cannot. You're not going to find a $500 computer that's better than the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X. Mudahar's not even arguing that. He's got a $1,200 build on screen. The point is, when you're getting into the $700 to $800 range just for a PlayStation, it's looking like it could be time for you to just get a computer instead. Because there's nothing that that $700, $800 computer is not going to be able to do that the PlayStation 5 Pro can. On top of the fact that you can enter PC gaming at the same or lower price than a PS5 Pro, you actually have the ability to upgrade your PC versus having your $500 console you're now either going to have to trade in to make getting a new one cheaper or just dealing with the fact that that's the performance level you're stuck at. And this performance to price calculation is why people bring up price comparisons to PCs and the PlayStation 5 Pro. Because if you're starting to leave the affordability to get into gaming, you might as well just save $300 to play on medium settings. Things. Spend that couple hundred you're saving on subscriptions to play online to buy a better graphics card down the road. You can even make the argument, buy a PlayStation 5, not a PlayStation.
PlayStation 5 Pro. The argument is still the same. The spec bump's not worth 700 bucks. Griffin's not even able to argue if it is or isn't because he's illiterate when it comes to computers. Instead, he's just like, well, then don't buy it. We are explaining to other people why we do not think they should buy it. Using facts and logical arguments. Something Griffin Gaming not only has no interest in doing, but probably doesn't have enough brain cells to do either. Now, yes, this is a more performance system, and obviously it costs a bit more. But remember, I could save around $200 off of this if I chose to go back down to 16 gigs of RAM. Maybe I got a weaker graphic card. Maybe I went down to like Ryzen 5 or something, right? Instead of 7. But remember, this is a bit more performant. I would say a fair amount more performant than what the PS5 Pro is offering. And with all of this, you do have the option. Yeah, and then you don't have your fucking controller. You don't have your keyboard and mouse. I could buy a keyboard and mouse for $10, dude. It's like, yeah, and you'll get a piece of shit. You'll get an app. Like, that's the thing. I just don't understand the point of this. Yes, let me build an absolute piece of garbage computer to compare to a console. What is the fucking point? Why would you want a piece of garbage? <laughs> I thought PC was the premium, premier gaming platform, and now we're fucking, you know, scavenging through the fucking trash to save as many pennies as possible? Like, it's just pitiful, dude. Why the fuck are you even building the PC if you're like that desperate to save like $10 here, 10 cents here? Like, it's just sad. Because you have the ability to. Not everyone can afford a $700 or a $500 system. You are able to upgrade a PC iteratively. You are able to play tons and tons of games at lower iterations than you can even buy a PlayStation 5 Pro. Even then, a good mouse is like, what, 40 bucks? You can get any name brand keyboard for like 30 to 50 bucks. We're still within the ballpark with the money we're saving, not spending it on subscriptions. But I chose to keep it a bit future-proof because I feel like, you know, when you're in this market, you probably want to spend a little bit more get a more performance system because it isn't just about playing video games with PC gaming. So if you're somebody that wants to, I don't know, be a content creator in the video game space, it might be better for you to buy this system setup versus just going out of your way to buy a singular gaming console that you can just play video games on, but maybe not be able to produce content with the same level of quality that you would expect with a PC. Now, I didn't factor in an operating system. Yes, because everyone who plays video games is a content creator. See, this is what I mean. It's like, okay, yeah, sure, you can do all this other shit on a computer, but if you're just buying a gaming machine, you obviously don't need to do that other shit, so... Again, kind of irrelevant, but yeah. Moonheart's not saying everyone's a content creator. He's saying that's why he's chose to make a computer that's like $1,200 instead of lowering it closer to the PlayStation 5 specs because someone who's getting a PC versus a console is probably meaning to do more on it than just play video games. You've just missed that point completely. The only time I think you should throw out the thing of like, oh, well, you can do all this extra stuff on it is if you're like justifying a massive price differential. Like if you tell somebody, yeah, you'd be better off spending $1,500 on a PC than 700 on a console because at least the PC is upgradable. You can do all this extra shit. You can play your games in a better fidelity than the console. But no, we're literally arguing like, hey, spend 700 bucks that you would have spent on a gaming system exclusively and buy a fucking $700 computer instead. It's like, okay, well, obviously the person's even considering buying the console. They don't have a need for the functionality of a computer already. So it's just kind of a stupid self-defeating uh, argument. I will tell you right now, if you buy a $1,500 computer, the chances that the average Joe would ever need to upgrade it for any reason, pretty low. The $1,500 computer is the upgraded build. Like I said earlier, the reason people are using the $700 build argument is because because that is upgradable. Griffin Gaming says he'd understand the argument for a $1,500 computer because you could say it's upgradable like he doesn't know you can upgrade a $700 computer. Now that I think about it, he could just very well not know you can upgrade a $700 computer. He's very much not a computer guy. As for the argument that someone buying a console has no need for a PC, I call absolute bullshit. It is the year 2024. Practically everybody has a PC. This isn't even my argument. Listen to it from Griffin's own mouth. Do you not fucking have a computer in your house in 2019? I mean, come on. I think most people at this point have a fucking computer, whether it be a desktop or a laptop. You can get a gaming variant of each for a couple hundred dollars extra, and you have a more than capable gaming machine. Straight from the Griffin's mouth. This is the exact same script that I've been reading from from the very first day I got my computer. There is no point in trying to build a computer for the same price as a console. Go watch my first fucking video about switching from console to PC gaming, and I guarantee you, you'll hear me say, I'd recommend spending about 1200 bucks on a PC. And that was back in 2019, when this shit was cheaper. 
Nowadays, it's probably like fucking 1800 bucks by fucking inflation standards. Actually, I could bet you, you could buy the same exact PC Griffin Gaming bought in 2019 for less than he bought it for in 2019, and it would still be bitching compared to a console. That's because it's technically outdated. Processors have gotten faster. GPUs have gotten much faster. That 1080 or 1080 Ti is still a really fucking good card, even though you can find it for less than half of its MSRP. All those games you're running at max setting back in the day still exist, Griffin and the value of the parts in that PC have only gone down since you bought it, without any change in the performance. No psychopath that I know of purchases a Windows license, okay? Usually people just go to Microsoft Windows, download the ISO file, and install it onto their system. That's why nearly in every gameplay recording video you see from any of your favorite fucking YouTubers, you'll probably notice activate Windows at the bottom right. Or they'll no, I'm not fucking poor, bro. Why the fuck would I leave activate Windows on the bottom of my computer? I'm not a fucking broke, disgusting, plebeian piece of shit. Holy fuck. Are you kidding me? I'm going to leave a fucking watermark on my computer permanently because I can't pay 30 fucking dollars for a license? Holy shit, dude. Absolutely fucking not. No, I'm not a filthy plebe. Here we have one of the dumber arguments from both Mudahar and a not very good rebuttal from Griffin Gaming. Windows does in fact cost over $100 if you buy it from Microsoft. However, you do not have to buy it from Microsoft. You can buy completely legitimate Windows licenses for as cheap as 10 to 30 bucks. The reason being that companies will buy them in bulk when installing Windows, then sell off the extra keys. And to my understanding, there's nothing wrong with purchasing these keys. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Windows is basically free now. That watermark and a couple customization settings is about all that's locked if you don't buy the key. I think two out of five of my computers don't have Windows actually activated on them because I don't need to. But keys really aren't that expensive. You can find them online for very cheap, though it's not necessary. So one of the things that I saw from yesterday's video, one you know, interesting little point, was people brought up like, hey, why do people like not complain about the price of an iPhone, which tons of people complain about iPhone prices. For instance, Apple just unveiled the iPhone 16 Pro. Now, if you want to look at pricing for this, get ready for this abomination. Yeah, an iPhone 16 Pro Max starts from 11.99 US dollars. Okay. So <laughs> this abomination. Oh my God, dude! Cell phones cost money. How fucking dare they? So yeah, that's pretty expensive, and that's we're not even getting. No, it's not. Dude, iPhone hasn't raised their price in like, what, 10 years? Dude, iPhones are actually very cheap compared to like every other phone brand nowadays, bro. Like Samsung has gotten insanely expensive. iPhone's prices have not increased whatsoever. And if you trade in your old phone, you're not even paying close to that. I don't know where Griffin gets the idea that they haven't raised their prices in 10 years, but it's just wrong. Price has practically increased for every generation. Yes, Samsung's flagship models are also very expensive, but the difference is Samsung has more than just the flagship. You can buy a Galaxy A for a couple hundred dollars instead of spending 1400 on what's basically a tablet that folds into a book. But here's the thing, I will counter you with this. You probably use your smartphone more than you use a gaming console literally every day, okay? This shouldn't really be a topic of discussion. There's a good chance that if you're buying a phone, you're using it for your personal life, your work life, you use it a heck of a lot more than you would ever use an actual gaming console, okay? Gaming consoles are used strictly for gaming. This is yeah, but you can trade in your existing gaming console towards the new one, just like you can trade in your old phone for the new one, so. Most people buying a PS5 Pro already have a ps5 so you know knock off half the price point already because why the hell would you keep your base PS5 around if you only have a need for one console anyway? Mudahar makes a solid point that you're probably going to be using your phone magnitudes more than you're going to be using a gaming console. And Griffin counters with, but you can trade up. And here's where we get to the trade up bullshit. Trading up is one of the biggest poor people scams I have ever seen. Be it a console, be it a phone, be it a car. Trade ups are downright retarded. As I explained earlier, if you already had a PS4 and bought a PS5 with no trade ups, that's already $900. With trade-ups, $750 at best, going off the numbers I found on how much a PS4 is worth. If you're already bought into the PS4, this might be a valid way to go. You have all these games you'll still be able to play. You'll be able to play more games that aren't going to be coming out for the PlayStation 4. You'll get better performance. Yeah, maybe that's worth it. But now let's look at the math for if we trade in for the Pro system. The base PS5 costs $500. The new one is $700. Without the disc reader, without the stand. If you're just to outright buy the PS5 Pro without trading in your old one, that's $1,200. 1310 with the stand and disc reader. PlayStation doesn't yet offer trade-ins for PS5s, only for PS4s. So the best place right now you can trade in is GameStop. Right now they offer $330 for the console in store credit, which means you'd have to buy your PS5 Pro from them. But we're trying to do the best numbers here, so we'll just go with that. So if you trade in your original console for $330, that brings the price down to $870 you have spent on the PS5 and the PS5 Pro. Again, without the stand, without the 
the disc reader. This is why people are saying this is a scam. $870 spent for you not to have a disc reader anymore and for you to play the same exact games you'd be able to play on a regular PlayStation 5. Not even. You don't have a disc reader. You can't play PlayStation 4 games anymore. And if you take my previous math as a PlayStation 4 owner, throw another $250 on top of that. You are now within PC price range. At least you could very well make the argument that the jump from PS4 to PS5 could make sense. Trade in your system. Go for it. But these two are on the same platform. The PS5 can already run games at 60 FPS. Do not waste your money on it. Now, here's the thing. When buying physical media, okay, I am playing these games actively. Games like System Shock Remake on my PlayStation. Shin Megami Tensei 5. <laughs> Wait, wasn't this the guy who was just saying that he doesn't fucking like console? Hold on. Why aren't you buying these games on PC, bro? You know what the commonality between every single one of these physical discs are? You do not need the internet to play these video games, okay? So to give an idea, one of the biggest forms of weird gaslighting that I've seen on the internet in the last several years, and anybody who is in the physical media space cringes anytime they hear this. All these physical discs allegedly are just licenses, but they don't actually contain the game. No, these are 100 gigabyte Blu-ray discs that contain a 1.0 version of the game that can be played from start to end without any form of patches needed to be downloaded. Now sure, you can download a patch and it might make the experience you know, better, it might fix a couple issues, might fix a couple glaring issues, but generally when these games are printed, they are finished from beginning to end. That's right, guys, but this is the guy who's advocating for you to fucking buy a PC and use Linux. Like, this video is so contradictory. So literally, he's advocating people to go and buy the cheap-ass PC instead, but now he's preaching about the importance of physical media? Like, bro, guess where you don't have the option of physical media? <coughs> it's on PC. It's like insane. Like, what is this shit, bruh? Like, I, I don't know. This is actually quite incredible. Gee, I really wonder why he's bringing up physical media in the video about the console that doesn't come with the ability to play physical media. The point Mudahar is making here, and he's literally about to say, is that the PS5 Pro is being sold without a disc reader. There's already digital-only versions of other consoles, like the PS5 and the Xbox Series S. The way it was sold is that you could get into gaming for cheaper if you get the digital versions of the consoles. If the price is getting up to PC levels that do not come with the ability to to use physical media, why would you buy a watered down PC when one of the main selling points for consoles, that being physical media, isn't there anymore? Of course, Mudahar is buying physical copies of games he likes. He has the $500 magic box that can play them without an internet connection. You know what doesn't have that? The $700 magic box that's about to be released. If Mudahar wanted to be able to play his physical media that he's already purchased on the new PlayStation 5 Pro, which he could buy because he's rich, it would cost him at least $700 eighty dollars to do so. Why would he do that when he has the five hundred dollar box already that comes with that ability? Thus why he thinks it's a scam. Griffin Gaming then goes on a tangent about pirating bad unless you can't buy the games anymore and the degradation of modern society in the United States of America. I will not subject you to all that bullshit. To the next point. Seventy dollars for them for a digital license which costs them far less to distribute from a server to your PlayStation than having discs pressed, boxes made, shipped to storefronts. Yeah, they're not passing any of these savings to you. And you bet your ass if the world goes digital, especially the gaming world that's never going to pass to you even with pc gaming with steam dude digital games have gotten more expensive in a lot of cases like shit go buy the call of duty games on steam those fuckers are like 30 bucks each you can go buy the copies of the games like pre-owned for like three dollars if anything digital games is going to result in more expensive games overall because there's a complete and total monopoly on distribution if you were paying attention that was mudahar's entire point he doesn't like that consoles are pushing more towards digital with prices exactly the same as the hard copies the savings are not being passed on to you you just now don't have a guarantee that game will exist in your library later which is practically the same issue you have on pc so the point Mudahar is making is that it seems like consoles are moving to get rid of physical copies altogether. Why spend the money on printing hard copies and distribution when as a platform you can basically just print money from the digital storefronts? And Griffin, your Call of Duty argument doesn't work because those $30 copies of COD that do go on sale and you can find third party keys of are still playable on PC. The same cannot be said with the PlayStation 5. You cannot buy a copy of Black Ops 2 and play it on your PlayStation 5, nor can you play it on your PlayStation 3 that I'm sure you traded up for the PS4 you no longer have. But yeah, I wanted to look back into this PlayStation scam because ultimately, the price they're selling the system at, you're getting dangerously close, if not right of the market, the front door of PC game. And at this point, if they're turning these systems, both Microsoft and Sony, into boxes where you're just effectively, where you're just buying watered down locked computers, why not just stick with Nintendo products? Because at least they care about physical media, even though I have my own issues with Nintendo. <laughs> Wait, why would you buy a PS5 over a Nintendo product? Uh, That's pretty obvious. That's pretty obvious. I would assume it's because you don't want your games running at 360p, 24 FPS, but... 
but hey. Again, Griffin entirely missed the argument. In fact, he's practically dodging it at this point. I'm sure if you asked him to steal man anything Mudahar said, he probably can't because he's just too retarded. Why did he bring up the Nintendo Switch? A much weaker system? Because the point he's talking about right now is physical media, something you 100% can get with Nintendo. My favorite part about this video is just how smug Griffin sounds throughout the entirety. Yet instead of being able to rebut any of the actual points, he just deflects completely to a different point. Some of those deflected two points Mudahar talked about later in the video, so it was kind of funny. Hearing Griffin make a point that Mudahar later destroyed anyways in a pre-recorded video. If you already have a PlayStation 5, you probably shouldn't waste your time buying a PlayStation 5 Pro. Even if you try to trade up, then you gotta go without a console for a while. Just stick with what you got. But at this point, if you're thinking about buying a console, honestly, I'd recommend PC myself. Obviously, not just for gaming. I think computers are very useful. And like Griffin said back in 2019, who doesn't have a computer in their home anyways, one of my older systems actually has that 3700X that Mudahar was showing off. And it's a pretty strong processor for what you pay for. And personally, I worked my way up to the nice computer I have today, starting from literal garbage I found at school. My first real PC that was mine was like a four core, three gigabytes of DDR2 RAM running Windows XP. Keep in mind, this is way after Windows XP was a thing. This is like in 20, I think 17, I still had that computer. My teachers would let me take home shit from the trash at school. I built up to a better computer that had like DDR3 RAM. Then I bought an old Xeon workstation with like a six core, 12 thread processor, 24 gigs of RAM, you know, something like 150 bucks, I think is what I paid for that. And then I got the 3700X build as a bare bone pre-built, which basically means it had as few parts as I needed it to have for me to take shit from my current computer and put it in for it to work. It cost me like $800. It didn't come with a graphics card because I already had one. I didn't need to buy another one. So I moved my 2060 Super over into it and that computer was great. It was, it was awesome. I was video editing as far back as that Xeon build, late 2019, early 2020. But that bare bone is what got me to actually having like the job I have today as a video editor. And now if we PC part pick my computer, the one I'm currently using today as a video editing manager, I have definitely come far. And the only reason is because of my computer, because I use it for more than just video games. I mean, that's not exactly true. The video game videos I made on my channel is partially why I got the job in the first place as a video editor back in, what was it, 2022? But you get the gist, okay? Computers, pretty useful. Go get one. I just thought this would be a fun video to do. Very low stakes, you know? Leave a comment if you have any other topics you want me to talk about or join the Discord server and have a good day.